So we're going to mess about the day with the Range Rover. A couple of wee things that I do on a regular basis is to have a look at the the mass of the air pressure sensor or map sensor, which is underneath the cover. Try get that off like that. Which is this sensor here, and what happens is. We've got our air intake coming from here. I've got our EGR pipe going into there, and this is measuring the pressure in the plenium chamber. And this tends to get bunged up a wee bit with carbon, etc. So I'm going to take that off, have a wee look at it. It's very, very simple to take off. You could probably do that in your own car and have a look and we'll give it a wee clean. So I think it's a wee tox bit. It's on that, and a wee electrical connector which is fairly straightforward to take off. So this is a, a T25 Torx. It should be fairly straightforward to take this off. And don't do what I normally do and drop this wee bolt in the engine. I'll put that safely elsewhere. We've got a wee pry driver, I think. Uh, I'll take this out first and see, so, there you go, let's try and get a close up of that, so you can see all the carbon parts on it, on the screwdriver, so I clear mine reasonably regularly, this is probably about a month or two's carbon on it, so I'll disconnect it and I will clean this up, now the connector is basically Lift that, lift that up, and there we have the mass air, uh, the air pressure sensor, or charged air pressure sensor. So I'm going to go all that off, I'll use a wee solution to do that, and then we'll get it back in again. So I use this stuff here, a liquid Molly airflow sensor cleaner, uh, just to clean like so this type of stuff. The cap off first and move that down a bit. So I'm just soaking it here to soften some of the, the carbon off that. And I'll probably get a wee brush now and just brush that. So this is just a wee detailing brush I use. Okay. Scrape the most of it off. Try and get these wee holes clear. So now, just watch there's a wee o ring here that makes it seal into the chamber. So you can see the difference in it already. I'm just going to get some. Uh, press there and blow that in there and blow these wee holes out, blow the wee bits of carbon out the holes should I say. So I'll just maybe try and get some, you can actually feel the wee bits of carbon in it, just be gentle with that. I'm not sure how expensive these are to replace, but they're fairly straightforward sensors. <coughs> I'll get some more liquid on that. I'll just let that sit for five minutes, then we'll we'll blow it out. So I'll just dry this off and blow some liquid out the wee ports. And that's that. Right, so we'll just put the connector back on, which is fairly straightforward. Just gently 
squeeze that into position, and that's about it. Get where a wee screw it. Gently screw that back in again. Doesn't have to be too tight, and there we are. And that's how simple it is to change your pressure sensor. Right, so we're in the car. Start engine. Ah, restricted performance. See that right away? What went away there? Restricted performance. That is doing something strange. Okay, let's switch it off. That was me switching off, by the way. Took a wee bit of a delay to, to go off, so. Well, that was worth a try. Let's go and take it all back out again and we'll test the car again. Probably have a code on that sensor actually when I think about it, but we'll try it again and see what happens. Okay, back to the vehicle. And go. Engine start. One opened. So no restricted performance that time. So far. Oh that's okay. to go very high. Right, let's get the scan tool on that and we'll see what it does for there. So we've got a scan tool running. Faults will be red. Still seeing restricted performance. Right, so we've got ABS brake module, train response, body control, cruise control, digital audio, headlamp, instrument pack, camera, engine, barometric pressure, turbocharger, supercharger, boost. So that might be the, the sensor we took out. Uh, P010516 to F manifold, absolute pressure, barometric circuit, general electrical failure, so that may be that. So if I clear them, okay, so we'll go back to engine, there are no faults there, uh, let's just clear them all, so clearing all faults, still seeing restricted performance, right, so that terrain response is always there, can never seem to get that away. Battery voltage, algorithm based failure signal. Clear that. It'll probably come back. Yeah, and terrain response. Uh, comes back. Digital audio. Yeah, get that. So I'm going to clear all again. Okay, let's read all the fault codes. That's the twos come back up which is the DAB antenna circuit. So why don't we start the car, let's see what happens. Still seeing restricted performance, see that? Feel it, it's not wanting to go, so I might have to take it on a wee test drive. See what's wrong with that. I thought that would have cleared that. And we've only got the two faults here, so not good. It's not even shown as a code. 
but that's now a bit worrying. It wasn't there before. Let's see, okay. And we've still got the red triangle. And we'll switch the engine off. But you'll listen, you'll hear it run on. No, it didn't that time. So I think we'll get it out, get it a wee run, see how it goes. Right, so we've got engine management light on and restricted performance. take it round the block to see if it clears anything and it did come up again and check that for the map sensor low input so still seeing that I've also got this other strange noise I need to investigate I think it's my left front wheel Yeah, so engine management light and restricted performance. So let's go up the hill. Yeah, it's got nothing, it just doesn't want to change gear it's fluently. I think I'm going to take that sensor back off. Yes, yeah, so I think it's uh, definitely related to that sensor. Maybe I've damaged it, blown it. It certainly doesn't want to go at all, the car. Although it is moving, but it's not got much power. Because the control module can't figure out what pressure's in there. Uh, end up in being like on a practice pants car. So that's me foot to the floor. A uh, wee bit of load on it. It doesn't want to move. So let's get it back into Raymond's garage and we shall take that off, that sensor back off again. Oh, the old Lift that bit up, pull the cable out, so it's definitely on. Uh -huh. I'll take this out. Hmm. I'm not sure what I can do with that. I mean, that's it in position, it's not as if it's not getting into its proper place. It's pretty clean. Pressure sensor 39 kilopascals and the manifold absolute pressure sensor voltage. So the voltage is fluctuating, but the pressure's not even when I'm uh, given the accelerator there. So there's definitely something wrong with that sensor. So I'm going to try and unplug that just to hold that in front of us. Right, so that's me unplug the sensor. Back to pressure center voltage. So it's basically saying there is a voltage coming to this plug here. And then I'll plug that back in, see if that 39 changes. So I don't think it's reading any kind of pressure there, so just get back to the drawing board with that. So we're now here with Apprentice Pat's car and we're going to take the map sensor off it. 
and we're going to put that in my car. I don't know why I started it up to try and. For God's sake. Mm, I definitely think one of your joints is really. Yes, so that's a problem to be solved on another day. Right, so we'll get this cover off. Can you hear that? Oh, for God's sake, can you hear it alright? <laughs> it's meant on to Right, so we're going to take this off. I think that's a T27. I think it's a wheel. That's a 27, I think that's too big. That's too big. It's a T25, I'm sure it is. If I don't have that many bucking times. Right, let's get that off. Who's that not going in there? I don't want to drop these, you see. Because yeah, you'll have to pick them all up. Nice and slack because it's been on and off. That's not too bad. That's only cleaned a fortnight ago. It's a bit sooty. That's only two weeks since that's been cleaned. Mm. Right, we'll put that straight in my car now. See what it does. Okay. Right, back to this one. Open the hood. And we'll take this off. Move my wee rubber away again at the back. Let's look at that. Put that over there. Put there, right? Okay. So we'll take this connector off. That one off. See what this one looks like. I'll probably look like brand new. That's what makes it even worse then. So no suit on that. That looks like it's just been cleaned, but it has been cleaned, but somebody didn't clean it right. Mm. And you obviously you weren't here to blame, so I'll have to take the wrap myself for that. Right, put that wee screw in there. Start engine. So, boot bonnet open. Door open, that'll be it. Need to shut? No, no. Gearbox fault. <laughs> <laughs> That's smashing. It goes through having a restricted performance to having a gearbox fault. I don't know if I'm in the way there. So, I shall. If you've heard that. Faults. Continue. Right, engine, manifold, absolute pressure, barometric circuit, so that was the same code, so if we clear that, uh, no, it's not there anymore, see that, terrain response, body control, digital audio, we'll clear all, so they are the normal faults, we mm -hmm. get there, mm -hmm. digital audio, which is that, the H, ventilation, I think it's the sensor, Yep, the windshield missing the sensor. And the camera, we know we've got a fault in the camera. Um, terrain response always seems to be there. Sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not. Yeah. So, um, that tells me we've knackered the sensor. Yes, you poke the, that's because you're poking at it. So what we'll do is, we'll switch the car off, change sensors again. Why don't you put your sensor in my car, no? Or would that you never know, get the gearbox fault back again? No, it does. It's, it's just an erroneous. No, Range Rovers are like notorious for giving these false things. So this is this is mine. Which this is the original one. Right. Okay. 
Let's try that and see if we've got a restricted performance on it. Here we go. Right front door open, bonnet open. Restricted performance. So that's how not to clean your map sensor. So I'm just cleaned and poked it, poked it with a wee stick. Damaged the sensor. You've damaged the sensor, so we now have to get a new steel sensor. Mine. We're going to steal a Prentice Pat sensor or get a new one. There's no much point taking that back off. I'm not going to go anywhere anyway. No. So, you should know what to do. Right, so I'm putting a Prentice Pat's map sensor back in, not that it'll do this car any good anyway because no. it's chugging about It's at least it's fucking problem So, um, since our last video about this car a rough running Range Rover which we'll leave the, the link in the description below uh, Pat's saying that it's still struggling to start it's very sluggish and the only thing we can think of is that it's choking and this is full of carbon So I think my next job is, is to take all this off Let's see if we can clean the plenum chamber. So the clue was in here when we took this off and the flap, the throttle flap was doing this itself mm -hmm. as if it was <gasps> trying to soak in and it was it was the pressure of the air getting soaked in so if this was narrow then this it would it would like as if it's trying to breathe in Yes So I think that's the, ne the next step was to take the plenum chamber off and try and clean it because one of the guys mentioned about um, check for leaks, but we've already done a, a very exhaustive smoke day, day test on this. Aye. And we never found any leaks at all. So what we could also do is take the throttle body off and we'll put the camera in there to see if we can see. It'll probably get gunned up with, gunged up with Aye. carbon. So here we are back a couple of days later and we have purchased a new map sensor there there the the part number so uh, we will take this off again as we've just proved that apprentice pat's uh, sensor seems to make the the restricted performance go we'll just take this off first so we'll get this replaced We'll get the scan tool on it and maybe learn a lesson from this. Right, so let's pop this out. I'm going to be very gentle with this now because I've learned a lesson from that. Uh, that should be fine there. I'll just gently squeeze that down. That's us in position. Uh, nearly positioned, there we go. We've got our wee torx bit and screw that one at the same time. Okay. Yep, so that's that. Simple as that. Two second job. Well, originally it was a two second job to clean it, but somebody made a complete arse of it. Right, let's get into the car. Uh, let's see how we go. And we'll just start. Let's have the bonnet open. Uh, there's an amber light as well. Gearbox fault, that's smashing. Uh, clear that, clear that. Gearbox fault, we'll clear that. So, another problem arises when we do that. So, I'm going to get the scan tool out and scan that. Oh, look, the gearbox fault's gone. Uh, I'm not scanning it now because that's the, that's the kind of things that Range Rover does or do. They come up with these strange faults. Oh, that's fine. We'll hit faults. Uh, scan. So we've got the usual faults. Uh, transmission, transfer case. Well, that's a new one. Camera. We know that. We know that. We know that. So we don't have anything relating to the engine. interested on that one, what does that say? So, battery voltage. I'm really curious why these cars do this all the time. We can have all the codes cleared, the car might sit for a 
day or two, come back and it's got a battery voltage general electric failure on quite a lot of items, uh, which probably are some of these ones here. We do have the usual three, terrain response, digital audio and the camera one. So let's clear them all. And I'll have expect just the three of the original ones to stay there. So there, they're back. Uh, that one stayed there. Digital audio is the antenna. We know that one. The HVAC windshield misting sensor. Another wee job in the background. And we know the camera. But that one, hmm, that's a new one. So, um, at least we've got the restricted performance gone. And as you'll see, you like listening to the Gypsy Kings. And it gives me a bit of satisfaction with that, that we've done that. So we'll get outside. And it's as simple as that. Um, this is how not to clean your map sensor. So if you're ever going to clean your map sensor, sensor don't just make the mistake that i done by poking into it probably busting some membrane in there what an idiot it's just cost me 120 quid for a new one but hey ho it's a very very simple fix and we've all learned from that uh, not to do that in probably any sense of use yes yeah, so that's us done uh, all finished with that very very easy fix putting a new map sensor on it even though it costs us 120 pounds which could have been avoided if we'd have paid attention and not poked needles into your map sensor but you live and learn and hey i hope you've had a look at that and make sure you don't do that yourself and save yourself a bit of bother so when you're cleaning your map sensor be very gentle just let it soak eh, rather than being an idiot and poking it eh, to try and get all the carbon out of it but that's us for now guys eh, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one cheers for now